Hey there, everybody. This is Kate Mahoney, lead instructor for NTA. And I am here today to go ahead and share a little bit about my story, what brought me here to NTA, and answer any questions that you have about the program. Um, from the looks of who was interested in this, it looks like there is going to be a mix of um, some new students who are already signed up for the program, along with people who are interested in learning more about the programs and former graduates. So it sounds like we're going to have a really good combination of people who are going to be joining us during this time. So welcome and hello. Um, so let's get started on me sharing a little bit about myself and what brought me here. So essentially, I had an undiagnosed autoimmune condition for a really long time. I started to show symptoms of it um, when I hit puberty, and it was unknown what it was that I was really dealing with. It turned out that my body was literally having an inflammatory response to my own hormonal cycles. So you can imagine what a fun roller coaster that was every month. It was not fun. What was really great is that I had, there's a lot of information out there on the internet, as we all know. And um, I'm one of those individuals who is old enough that I was in my 20s when the internet started to actually become really big. And it opened up a lot of different doors to having information. Hi, Leah. Hi, Juliana. Nice to see you guys here. Um, it opened up a lot of doors to me having access to more information. And I did a lot of self-study for many, many years. But it didn't change the fact that there was still a lot of information that I felt I was really missing. So that's what kind of got me into... Um, going down the supplement route because as we all know supplements are basically nutrients that can be used therapeutically in order to um, help to support the healing process right so that's what I wanted to learn about and let's just safely say that unfortunately the supplement industry it's kind of known for being about profit. Hi Erica, nice to see you here, welcome. And a lot of the education that I got when I was involved with the supplement industry was more about, well let's just say it had a lot of holes. <laughs> and after five years of being there, I realized that I really wanted to learn more and it was time for me to find a way to kind of fill those holes and those gaps that I wasn't getting from the really fantastic information that I learned about biochemistry from the supplement industry, but it wasn't really foundational. Like it wasn't really teaching me about what is optimal homeostatic function from an anatomical and physiological level. And I really wanted to learn that. So, I started looking into a whole bunch of different programs and kind of compare and contrasting and going down a whole bunch of different routes. Um, I looked into ortho, molecular medicine, functional medicine, um, different nutrition programs that were known for being holistic. And I stumbled acro across this great organization known as the National Association of Nutrition Professionals, or NANP, and they had a whole list of programs that were actually accredited where you could become board certified in nutrition if you took one of these holistically minded programs. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can become board certified. This is so amazing. That was very, very exciting to me. Um, oh, hi, Allison. Hi, Kimberly. Welcome. Great to see you, too. So I started looking at and comparing and contrasting all these programs because really when it comes down to my history and what I'm really passionate about, I am most passionate about 
real food. And the healing potential that is possible with real food and herbs and things that um, are found in nature. So when I started comparing and contrasting all these different programs, I kept coming back to the programs that were offered by NTA. And this was about five years ago. So I did kind of a deep dive of research into um, all of the information that NTA provided online about their programs. And I realized that for me, the nutritional therapy practitioner program was right up my alley. And the reason why is because, um, and I'm going to go ahead and link this information in the comments. Actually, let me go ahead and do that now. This is a link where everyone will actually be able to go and compare and contrast the two programs, which I think is really important because the two programs are the Nutritional Therapy Consultation Program and the Nutritional Therapy Practitioner Program. Hi, Desiree. Good to see you. Desiree is actually one of my former students. Um, I was a group leader, which is known as a course mentor, really, uh, when she went through the program. And we have become very good friends, and we share lots and lots of um, clinical pearls of wisdom with one another. So I'm so glad you were able to join, Desiree. Yeah, you know me. I love talking about supplements. <laughs> so um, the difference between the two programs is the Nutritional Therapy Consultant Program focuses more on the food aspect. So what's really fantastic about that program is if you want to learn about therapeutic dietary protocols, that is really the program for you. It actually gives you a wonderful foundation of information to be able to work virtually with people and work on making um, improvements on a dietary level. But the reason why I chose the Nutritional Therapy Practitioner Program for myself is because what really excited me is that there is this fantastic functional testing that goes along with that program, meaning that there is a clinical functional assessment using functional testing, clinical testing, where you work with the person's body and you're actually able to figure out, number one, what organs are in stress, and number two, what nutrients will help to bring that body back into homeostasis. And to me, that was like gold. And the reason why is because when I was a health and wellness consultant for five years working in the supplement industry, it was all about symptoms, 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 treating symptoms. And how is that any different from the Western medical world, right? It's, it's all about addressing symptoms. And why I was looking into a program is because I wanted a way to figure out what is it specifically that this individual needs. And when I found out that the Nutritional Therapy Practitioner Program actually had that, they had a way to be able to figure out why and how is this person's body out of balance and what nutrients are needed to help get it back towards that balance, get it back towards that homeostatic function. I knew that I had found the program for me. So I, of course, excitedly enrolled <laughs> as quick as I could. Um, and I'm so glad that I did. Let me tell you guys, this program blew me away and it blows a lot of people away. We have graduates who are um, licensed chiropractors, licensed uh, physical therapy practitioners, and we know how much schooling goes along with those degrees. People who are, um, emergency nurses or even nurse practitioners who take this program and they are blown away by the amount of information that this program actually contains because it gives you this amazing foundation 
of um, anatomy and physiology, but it ties it back to food. And the reason why it does that and why that is so essential and so important is because every structure and every function in the human body is built from and made from nutrients. I mean, really, think about it, right? I mean, that is like mind kablooey right there because you literally are what you eat, which means if you're not eating healthy fats, that's a big deal. If you actually look at the cell membrane inside the body, we're talking every cell. We're talking every bone cell, every muscle cell, every brain cell, every nerve cell, every cell in the human body is a lipid bilayer. What does that mean? That means that every cell membrane in the human body is made of fat. So this is why things like healthy fats are so essential and so important. And what's really great is that this program empowers every single one of its graduates with the information to be able to convey these incredibly complex topics and subjects with the simplicity to be able to communicate it to anybody and everybody. And I love that about this program. So um, that's just one really, really good example of how our body is made of nutrients, right? The lipid bilayer that is inside that makes up the membrane of every cell. Because if you're not eating healthy fats, or if you're not eating fats at all, are you going to be able to make healthy cells? No, you're not. And that's going to lead to what? Dysfunction. And guess what, guys? That's part of what was happening with me. Because I grew up during a time when the low fat and no fat craze was like huge. Um, and what's so great about this program is that it actually gives you the background and the history and the research and the studies to show why healthy fats are so important and what fats are healthy using evidence-based science and research and studies. And it is phenomenal in that way because it basically sets you up and empowers you um, for successful communication and having the information that you're providing to the clients that you're working with be backed up scientifically. And I don't know about you guys, but I am like seriously excited about that, you know. <laughs> um, just so you know, I do see that some of you have some questions that are coming through. I do see that and know that I'm going to make sure to, um, to make time to address your questions at the end of this. So thank you so, so much for, uh, for going ahead and just shooting those questions out. If you have any questions that come up while I'm talking a little bit, just go ahead and put them down in the comments. But also realize that I am human and therefore not perfect. So as I'm going through and answering the questions, um, if I have missed yours, please do not hesitate to add it again at the bottom because I want to make sure to get to everybody. That's really, really important to me. So um, I feel like that, yeah, explains a little bit about why I came to the program, how I got here, what I got out of it, the difference between the two. Um, I have to say that one of my favorite things about being part of this program and going through is that I am now part of an amazing community of what I like to refer to as real foodies. Because if you are someone who has always like for me, let's talk a little bit about my history instead of saying if you are. So for me, I am someone who from the time that I was in my early 20s, if I had a loved one who had specific dietary restrictions and there were certain foods or recipes that they could no longer enjoy, 
I was the person who worked on reformulating that recipe, taking their dietary restrictions into mind so that they could still have that food or that dish or whatever it was that they had this really strong emotional connection to. So I've been doing that for like 20 years. And um, my best friend has always been a foodie. She's the one who really turned me on to recognizing and understanding the powerful healing potential that real food contains. Um, so let me just say, there is no, between the two different programs, there is no right or wrong. There is no one program that is better than the other. They are both exceptional. And what I love about the colleagues that I work with, the other members of the instructor team, is that we really believe that we are stronger together. So we all know that we have um, different specialties and areas of expertise and we work really, really hard to collaborate with each other and to share our knowledge with one another. Um, and I love being part of a team that is so accessible to each other because that means that our collective knowledge is accessible to every single one of the students that enters this program. So um, I loved that when I went through the program. Uh, I love it now that I'm part of the instructor team. And it's really fantastic to be able to empower so many amazing people with this information. So um, let's see. I want to go ahead and check my notes and make sure that there's anything that I haven't covered before I get to your questions. So I think that kind of like gives you a really good idea in a nutshell of um, the program, the differences. Um, let me go ahead and scroll back and take a look at any questions that you guys might have. Do, 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 do. Ooh, I love that there are so many students here who are starting in February. Yay! I'm excited for you to start too. Woot woot. <laughs> okay, so hi, Jessica says, Hi, Kate. I'm a certified personal trainer looking into the program, but I'm having a difficult time choosing between the two programs. Do you have any recommendations which program would work best in the CPT field and why? Thank you. That is a fantastic question. So I'm very happy to let you know that there are so many personal trainers who actually take either one of the programs and it kind of depends on what and where you want your focus to be right so for example um, the personal trainers who take the nutritional therapy consultant course they are looking to really hmm, let me grab some water real quick <clears throat> the people who decide to take the nutritional therapy consultant program <clears throat> are more interested oh my goodness <clears throat> my voice, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Always happens this time of year, I'm telling you. I live in Seattle, so the dampness right now is just like, Bleh. Um, So essentially, they take the NTC program over the NTP program because they're more interested in being able to have the knowledge and understanding of how to implement different therapeutic dietary protocols safely with their clients, right? So they, they're they taking their knowledge and understanding of the human body and exercise and workouts and things like that. And if a client has a specific issue or is looking for a specific outcome, they actually have this whole body of knowledge and information having to do with very specific therapeutic dietary protocols that address certain things such as, um, what's a really good example? <clears throat> really good example, 
specifically would be, oh, so cultivating metabolic flexibility, which is really, really important because anyone who's well-versed in keto knows that what you're actually trying to cultivate is metabolic flexibility, not someone who is specifically just looking at um, being keto all the time because that will actually study show lead to the body developing something known potentially as insulin resistance and having a really hard time managing or utilizing glucose for energy which is really important the body actually technically needs like one teaspoon of glucose in the bloodstream at all times in order to maintain homeostasis. That's just a um, physiology and biochemistry fact of the human body. Now the body can make its own glucose, but that is a very um, energetically taxing process. And so when you really do a deep dive into the ketogenic protocol, you'll find out that it's a matter of cycling on and off in order to cultivate that metabolic flexibility and including things like intermittent fasting and things like that. And the NTC program specializes in teaching knowledge and information about that kind of thing, which is fantastic. They even will give the students from that program access to recipes to be able to help create meal plans for their clients, um, things like elimination diets, uh, that kind of thing. That's all included in the NTC program. Now the NTP program, the people who do that, there are personal trainers who go through that program as well. Um, and typically they're the ones who really are specializing in their personal training to work with a person's body a little bit more manually. Because remember, there is the clinical functional assessment. These are functional tests where we're literally working with the body and on the body of our clients to be able to figure out how is this organ doing? Is it in stress? Does it need help? If it does need help, what nutrients will bring it into balance? And we utilize something called LMT, which is lingual neuro testing, where we're utilizing the communication between the brain and the nervous system for the person's body to tell us what nutrients will actually benefit specific organs. So if you want to go more food-based, the NTC program is probably going to be the right one for you. If you want to go more um, nutrient-specific and functional testing, go in that direction, then the NTP program is probably going to be the right one for you. So like I said earlier, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no one program that's better than the other. They offer similar things. So the body of knowledge about like anatomy and physiology and um, how the body works when it's optimally in homeostasis for things like digestion and blood sugar and um, learning about fats and all the scientific information. Both programs include all those things. The difference is one focuses more on food and the other, and that's the NTC program, and the other is more if you literally want to be a functional practitioner and do functional testing to help your client figure out exactly what nutrients they need at each step of the process to help bring their body back into balance and closer to homeostatic function. So hopefully that answered your question um, and I'm going to go ahead and like that to show myself that yes I have addressed that question. <laughs> All right, so Juliana, I see you say, I plan to enroll for the NTC. I am in Europe. Is there a way to upgrade later to NTP? What I can tell you is that while that is not in place yet, the good news is that NTA is working on creating that. So 
For NTCs who decide that they later want to learn the functional testing, the clinical functional assessment, and the LNT, and working with the body in that way, <clears throat> my understanding is that that is in the works. It is not available yet because there are other things that are taking precedence. One of them, which a lot of the community is very excited about, is NTA has been working so, so hard at making the body of information that all students have access to when they're going through the program. That's something that we're updating regularly. And we are working really hard right now on creating a portal so that all graduates that are in good membership standing with NTA will have access to the updated curriculum on a regular basis. So if you're an NTC, that means you're going to have access to the updated curriculum for the NTC program. And if you're an NTP, you're going to have access to the updated curriculum for the um, NTP program. And the reason why they're working at doing that is because it's really important to them to make sure that all graduates are going to be empowered with the most current and best information out there. So any updates to the curriculum, we feel that it's really important for graduates to have access to that. So um, will there be a way to go from an NTC to an NTP? Yes, but some things take priority first. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Annie says, hi, I'm excited to get started with you in February. Me too. Hi, Annie. I take it you are one of my soon-to-be students. Um, I'm not sure which venue you're going to be at because I'm teaching both the Dallas, Texas, and Brisbane, Australia venue. But I am really excited, too. This is an incredible program, and it's going to be full of amazing people. And I'm also really excited for you because um, if you are attending the Dallas class, which I have a feeling you might be, and I'm sorry if I'm wrong, um, but a lot of the graduates who just graduated this past November have signed up to be course mentors, and you are going to have an amazing community of people supporting you at that venue when you attend. Let's see, Allison, are they all are there alternative start dates other than May? Yes, Allison, there are. So you will be very happy to know that for every single one of the programs, both the NTP and the NTC program, there are three start dates every year. One of them is the February start date which is actually coming up. Um, the next one is the May start date, which I believe enrollment for that begins after enrollment for the February start date closes. And the next start date is going to be September. So every year we have three start dates, February, May and September. So you're not going to be locked into just choosing one. Um, if you want more information about like if if you think that either the February or the September start date might work better for you, my suggestion is you can actually follow the link that I posted earlier in the comments that shows the comparison between two different programs. And if you're interested in one or the other of the programs, you can go in there and figure out, okay, well, what are the workshop dates for the NTP programs? Where are the venues that this is happening? And that information is currently for the February start classes. Now, since the May start classes sounds like something that you're not able to do, you're also going to be welcome to call and TA. So let me go ahead and do, 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 do. I do have their phone number available here. I just need to pull that up so that I can paste it. Oh, and it's not letting me do that. So hold on a second. Let me type it in. So NTA's 
zone number so that you can call them and find out what are the venues, what are the start dates for the September class, because that information has not been posted yet. And I want you to go ahead and have access to it. So that's 800 918-9798. So if you want more information about a venue that hasn't been posted yet, you can call and talk to one of the admissions advisors who are fantastic individuals that we are so lucky to have all the people who are on our admissions team doing the work that they do because they basically specialize in all this information. So um, if you're at all interested in finding out more, I strongly suggest calling them and just kind of picking their brain to find out more information um, and figure out what venue start date would probably work best for you. Ooh, Gail, you're enrolled in the Dallas class. Hi, nice to meet you. I really look forward to meeting you soon, next month, ha ha, <laughs> on Zoom, in the Zoom classes. So that's one of the other things that, um, that NTA does with its programs is since most of the information is online, and that is for both the NTP and the NTC programs, the Ability to connect in a virtual world can be really difficult. So we have something called Zoom classes, and these happen every other week throughout the duration of the nine month course. The difference is that the NTC program, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, sorry guys. The NTC program is 100% online. You do not have to do anything in person. So if you're looking for a program where you can get the certification and this information without needing to travel, the NTC program might be a better option for you. The NTP program, however, since it does have the clinical functional assessment and the LNT, and you're basically learning how to be a functional practitioner, you have to meet in person in order to learn how to do the hands-on functional testing. Like you have to, there's no way around that. You need to be able to learn how to do that correctly. So that's why the venues, meaning the location for the NTP programs is really important, as well as the set dates for the workshops, because there are three in-person workshops throughout the course. The first one is usually about um, two and a half months into the course. The next one is usually about uh, five or six months into the course. And then the last one is going to be right towards the tail end um, of the nine months that the course is. So just kind of keep that in mind that if traveling really isn't an option for you and you need to find a way to fit this in to your very busy life, the NTC program might be a better option for you. Than the NTP program. But keep in mind, both programs require a minimum of 20 hours of study time each week. So just as an example, I took this program when I was working full time. And my spouse, I was lucky enough to have a spouse, and he basically took care of everything at home. We're talking like the grocery shopping, the cooking, doing the dishes and I would go to work and I would come home and I would study for two hours and I would pass out and on the weekends I would study for like eight hours a day. <laughs> um, and I did not have a social life during that time. And I told my friends and my family, I'm like, I'm not going to have a social life during this time. So your reality, don't get freaked out by that because your reality might be different than my reality. I'm someone who really, haha, -ha, digests information, pun intended. So there were times when the material would literally take me a little bit longer to just kind of like process and get context for before I moved on to the next thing. So um, there are some people who can complete the program in. Um, 18 hours flat each week, 
without a problem. So that would be like two hours a day um, every weekday and then eight hours one weekend day, which would give you one weekend day off, right? That's 18 hours. For me, I need a little bit more than that. And I am a fast reader, guys. Like I can take a novel and I can burn through that novel in two days. But if we're talking about really heavy, um, deep, intellectually stimulating information about anatomy and physiology and biochemistry and optimal homeostatic function, it's going to take me a little bit longer to get through that information. So just kind of be aware of yourself and be honest with yourself about, is this doable for me? Is this feasible for me? If it is not, and it's still really important to me, what do I need to change about my life or my lifestyle to be able to accommodate this? Um, so for me, that was having a conversation with my spouse and saying, this is really important to me and I need your support in this way. And he said, okay. Yay! <laughs> so just kind of keep that in mind and figure out how you can... Um, give your life the flexibility and the adaptability that you need to be successful in doing this. So I see Victoria has a question. She says, hi, Kate, I'll start in February. I would like to know if you can tell me in which order do we have to read the books that we have in the reading list? That is an excellent question. And it is actually something that a lot of the instructors are saying, hey, why are we not giving our students the order of the reading list. So um, that is something that's still in the works, giving students the order of the reading list prior to starting. My suggestion is to actually call the um, admissions advisors and ask them for that. Because the more requests soon-to-be students make for that information, the better chance that's going to be happening sooner than later, right? Right. But what I can tell you um, is if you were to start reading, for example, why stomach acid is good for you or the big fat, well, actually, no, I would think I think it would be better for you to read Why Stomach Acid is Good for You before The Big Fat Lie. Both of those books have a book review that is due as an assignment during the first term of class. So if you start reading one of them now and finish it, you will actually be ahead, ha ha, which is fantastic, taking a little bit of a load off your shoulders. So that is just like a little pearl of wisdom that I am more than happy to go ahead and share with you. Um, Leah, yes, I can't wait too. So Leah Williamson, she is here on this Facebook Live and she is actually my colleague who's going to be helping to teach the Brisbane class. We're going to be teaching that together and I am so, so excited. She is fantastic people. We are both Muppets. If you don't know what that means because you're too young and I'm too old, that means we're huge goofballs. So yeah, be prepared for goofball happenings if you are enrolled in the Brisbane Australia class because let me tell you that is coming. But don't be afeared because if you are in the Dallas class and you enjoy having goofball teachers, I'm actually going to be teaching that with one of my colleagues, Kim Morell. She is someone who was... Um, one of my first students when I first started being an assistant instructor and she is now my assistant instructor which I'm so excited for because she is fantastic people and she and I are both very big goofballs too so don't worry if you are enrolled in either one of my classes you're gonna have some Muppet moments so just kind of be prepared for that people <laughs> um, Ooh, Kim, you're starting in February, too. That is fantastic. I am so excited for you. Ooh, Victoria, San Diego. Fantastic. Yes. Um, let's 
see. So Kim and Victoria, I have a feeling you're probably going to be taking both taking the San Diego class. Either that or Kim might be taking the San Francisco class. They both have amazing instructors. I mean, I can't say enough about my colleagues who I teach with. They're just all phenomenal, not only personally, but also intellectually. So I'm really excited for both of you. Ooh, Sarah, finished NTP last year, group leading this year. Yay, love the program and the mission. Me too. We are all in very good company with each other, aren't we, Sarah? Um, oh, I'm so glad that was helpful, Jessica. Yay, so Kim, reverse question, can NTPs take the culinary healing courses? You know, in all honesty, Kim, I am not sure about the answer to that question. I wish that I knew, but this definitely gives me more to become aware of um, with the changes that NTA is working on implementing for its graduates. My thought is probably, but I can't say for sure. So my suggestion is to go ahead and contact um, the admissions advisors and just inquire about that and find out because you know what? Just between you and me, super squirrel. I'm interested too. Yeah. Okay. So Jill. Ah, yep. Same question. So see, multiple people are interested in that. So like I said, the biggest way for NTA to know that there is interest in that direction from its former graduates is to contact the admissions team and just say, hey, this is something I'm interested in because the more people that do that, the more that they'll see that there is actually a demand. So if you think about supply and demand, we want to show them that yes, there is a legitimate interest in this and they will make that happen because they're very, very good about finding ways to support and empower their graduates. Um, do, 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 do. Kim, is there a way to find out which book we need for our first class? So it's not really that you need a book for your first class. They kind of go by terms. So if you are <clears throat> wanting to kind of um, space out how you're buying the books, my suggestion is to contact the admissions advisors and just say, okay, <clears throat> I need this required reading list broken up by term. I need to know what books am I going to need for term one, what am I going to need for term two, what am I going to need for term three, and the reason why I suggest that is because there are a bunch of books on the required reading list that are actually books that you're going to be using repeatedly throughout the entire program, like from the beginning all the way through the end. One of them is the anatomy and physiology book just as an example. So um, knowing like what you're going to need for term one, term two, term three, and the books that you're going to need all the way through the course will probably be really good beneficial information. So hopefully that helps you. Um, ooh, Allison, you are considering the September start date. Awesome. Okay. Janet, ooh, Hi, Janet. Good to see you. So Janet is one of my former students, now colleagues. She just graduated from the Dallas class this past November of 2018. It is really good to see you, Janet. Hi. Allison is also asking, what areas do students typically find themselves working in after graduation? Oh, this is a great question. Do graduates also have opportunities to work within doctor's offices? Okay, so I'm so glad you asked this, Allison, because this question actually brings up something that I absolutely love about NTA's programs that is, in my opinion, one of the things that I think makes their programs so phenomenal. So their programs basically provide a foundation of information. That's it. And within that, because these are adult continuing education programs, so NTA really doesn't feel like it's their place to micromanage 
what does being an NTP or an NTC mean? Is there code of conduct that we all need to adhere to as members and graduates? Yes, definitely. That's not what I'm saying or speaking to. What I'm talking about is that when you graduate from one of NTA's programs and you become a practitioner, it is entirely up to you what kind of practitioner you're going to be. Are you going to be someone who works online remotely with people? Are you going to be someone who does group classes? Are you going to be someone who is a private practitioner? Are you going to be someone who is part of a wellness collective? Are you going to be someone who is um, providing nutritional support to patients in a chiropractor or doctor or functional medicine doctor's office? I mean, there are so many different possibilities. The truth is, none of them are wrong. Oh, there's also the people who already have a medical license of some kind or degree, whether it's a, um, like I was talking about before, a chiropractor or a registered dietitian or a nurse practitioner or a registered nurse or a physical therapist or a personal trainer or a whole plethora of other certifications. And they will actually take their prior existing professional skill set and combine it with the toolbox that they are getting from going through one of the NTA programs. So you will find within the community so much diversity. There is no right or wrong way to be a practitioner as long as you are staying within the professional code of conduct that we all adhere to. Um, are there people who work within doctor's offices or chiropractor's offices or within collective wellness clinics or you name it? Yes, all of that and more. <laughs> so um, it really just kind of depends on what is it that is right for you as a practitioner? And no one can tell you that. And NTA is certainly not going to tell you that. NTA is going to be like, go forth, my child, and find your wings in whatever way they spread for you. Um, they, I kind of look at the NTA program as being a metamorphosis, where every single person who enters it is a, a caterpillar that has the chrysalis form around them and while they are going through the program they are in that chrysalis and on the other side they emerge as someone or something who is transformed an entirely different being i can tell you that when i went through the program i did not know what to expect and i came out on the other side blown away and someplace i really didn't expect um, and that happens to most of the graduates I know. There are some people who think they're going into it for one reason, but on the other side of it, they come out and they find themselves going in a completely different direction because by going through that metamorphosis, they actually found their truth, right? Or at least what was true for them on the other side of that. A lot of us find that after we graduate from the program, our directions, it's like we start out going one direction and then all of a sudden it's like life sidetracks us and says, okay, and now you're going to go this direction and okay, and now you're going to go this direction. So there's no right or wrong answer and all the question that you asked about opportunities to work within doctor's offices, if that's something that you are passionate about. And if you pursue that direction, yes, definitely. Do other NTPs and NTCs do that? Yes, definitely. And one of the things I can tell you is that um, NTA is an incredibly supportive community. So what's wonderful is after you graduate, there are actually Facebook groups for graduates where if we have questions about how do I do this or how do I do that or where can I find the best resources and information about this topic? Questions like that are asked every day in this Facebook group that has over 2,000 people in it. And it is full of incredibly 
supportive people who will be there to answer your questions and provide information. And let me just tell you that to be part of such an altruistic community is amazing and incredible. We are not competitive with each other. We're actually supportive and celebrate one another's successes. And I don't know about you, but to me, that is like huge. <laughs> um, so hopefully that answered your question. Selena Ann asks maybe a stupid question. There are no stupid questions, but I understand why you prefaced it that way. Sometimes I feel like prefacing things that way too. Is it possible to go from NTC to NTP? Would you have to duplicate work or only complete the missing elements? That is a great question, Selena. So um, this Facebook Live is actually being recorded. So when you go back and watch the recording, you'll actually be able to hear that I answered that question a little bit earlier um, during this Facebook Live. So rather than repeat information, I'm just going to go ahead and move on. Oh, yes, Leah. Muppets Unite. That's right. <laughs> Oh, Kim, you're in San Francisco. Great. You've got a really wonderful instructor team there. Yes, leg in comments. <laughs> I totally agree. Oh, Jacqueline, you're hoping to start in May. That is fantastic. Yeah, so really good news, you guys. If watching this Facebook Live is making you a little bit more interested about finding out more specifically about the NTC versus the NTP programs. We have some amazing senior lead instructors that have been teaching for NTA for over 10 years, and they usually head up the info sessions that do a little bit of a deeper dive in the NTP versus NTC programs. And I believe one is happening on January 20. Third, if I remember right. And that's going to be um, led by one of our senior lead instructors, so either Kathy Eason or Caroline Berenger. And they are both such amazing individuals and have so much fantastic information that they'll be able to share with you. Um, let's see, do we get to run any kind of tests on our clients? I have IIN, I don't want it to be the same. So first of all, Nadia, I love that question, and I can let you know that IIN, this is very different. So um, we do have a lot of IIN graduates that have actually taken our program. In fact, if you do a Google search on the IIN versus the NTP programs, one of the most commonly found articles that I really like is written by um, Angie Alt, who, use, who is an IIN graduate that decided to go through one of the NTA programs afterwards, and Mickey Trescott, who is an NTP. And they actually do a compare and a contrast between the different programs, um, both NTP and NTC, and also the IIN, and the strengths that every single one of them has so that you can kind of see the differences between what you would be getting out of one versus another and whether or not you feel that looking into one of the NTA programs would potentially be a good direction for you. So with the NTP program, you do clinical functional assessments. So we are literally clinically working with the body, like doing palpations on the body to test the different organs to see whether or not they are in stress. Um, as an NTP, unless you have another license or certification to be able to run tests on your clients, that is something that is outside of the scope of our practice as an NTP. However, what I can tell you is that once you complete an NTA program, whether it's the NTP or the NTC program, there are different continuing education courses that actually give you the credentials to be able to run a myriad of different tests. For example, there's the um, HTMA, the hair tissue mineral analysis. There is a continuing education program that specializes in that. There is um, an incredible program known as Restorative Wellness Solutions, and they have three different levels of that program, one of which specializes in um, 
oh, I haven't taken these programs, so I'm so sorry, restorative wellness solution people, if I say this wrong, but I believe they have a digestion program, a hormone program, and they might have a blood chemistry program. I'm trying to remember. I'm so sorry if I misspoke. But with every single level of those programs, you have the ability to um, to sign up and do testing, like stool testing and um, and the saliva spit test for uh, hormone levels and, and things like that. You actually gain the ability to run those kinds of tests. So if you take one of the NTA programs, and you're interested in doing testing, then having this certification would make you eligible to take continuing education programs so that you would have the ability to do those tests. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let's see, Victoria, do we need to download any platform on our computers to take courses? No, you do not. You just need to have a steady, reliable internet connection and a steady, reliable computer. Um, one of the things to know about the program is that it will not work on a pad or a notebook. You literally need a laptop or a computer of some kind. Um, the online learning system is not compatible with pads, I believe. Uh, to find out more information, though, about the specifics of what you need to take the program, I um, I highly suggest calling the admissions office because those people specialize in that information much more than me. I'm supposed to keep like you know all the pieces in my head about the curriculum, and they're supposed to keep all the pieces in their head about how to navigate that curriculum. <laughs> so hopefully that answers your question. But the good news is the online learning system is literally online. That means there is nothing that you need to download into your computer to take the program unless you want to download the curriculum to have it to view later, which a lot of students do. I did that. I still have my curriculum downloaded on my computer from when I was a student. And then when I was a group leader, aka course mentor, um, since the curriculum is constantly being updated, I would download the updates to the curriculum onto my computer. So that was kind of nice. Uh, how are you applying to the NTP certification? I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that question. So I'm going to answer it in the way that I hope you mean it, um, and go ahead and give me a thumbs up if I answered it. So essentially, the NTA offers two different certification programs. Their two programs are the NTC, Nutritional Therapy Consultant, or the NTP, which is the Nutritional Therapy Practitioner Program. By applying for and completing one of these programs, you then become certified as an NTC or an NTP. So hopefully that answers your question. Erica asks, where can I find whether or not I can practice as an NTP in my state? Ooh, that is a great question. And to be perfectly honest with you, Erica, that is not an area that I specialize in. However, the fabulous admissions people specialize in that information. So if you contact them, they will actually be able to give you um, a website. You can contact them via email. You can contact them by calling them. They can give you a website so that you can actually look up what are the laws in your specific state. And one of the things I can tell you is that because we have such an incredibly collaborative and supportive community, one of the things that's really great is that a lot of times graduates will go into the Facebook group and they'll say, I am from this state and I need to connect with other colleagues from my state to know how to navigate the laws in my state. Who can help me? And what's great is that Everyone who knows anyone who is from that state will start tagging people, will speak up and be like, I'm from that state, I'd love to talk to you. So you're always going to have support, which is really, really fantastic. You can also um, 
on the NTA website. I'm going to go ahead and link that. Do, do, do. Now this is different than the other link. The other link actually will take you directly to the compare and contrast between the two programs, whereas this link will give you access to a provider search. So Erica, the reason why I linked that was so that you can actually do a provider search for people in your state and reach out to them and say, I'm really interested in the program, but I just want to better understand the laws of the state. Would you mind, um, you know, making some time to talk with me so that I can better understand and make a more informed choice? And I can tell you the majority of the people that you reach out to are going to be right there and saying, I'd love to talk with you because if they know that you're a fellow real foodie and, and that you might soon be part of the NTA community, they're going to be like, woohoo, another colleague, yay. So there you go. Um, Abby asks, can you talk a little bit more about the code of conduct that you mentioned? What type of regulations exist around how you can apply and work using the NTP NTC certification. And following that, are you able to get any licenses after the NTA education? So that is definitely a multi-layered question and an incredibly good one, Abby. Okay, so the code of conduct is basically like any professional code of conduct, right? So for example, um, instructors, we, cannot take on any of our students as a client when we are teaching them. That is just, you know, it's a professional boundary. So the code of conduct basically has to do with common sense professional boundaries. So if you think of any common sense professional brown, professional boundaries that a um, licensed massage practitioner would have, like when you are a practitioner, you don't get involved with the client. <laughs> that kind of thing. It's just a professional code of conduct. So just kind of think of it like that. It's very typical um, of any practitioner to make sure that there are certain boundaries that we adhere to to uh, make sure that we're treating one another and our clients in a respectful way that really honors each individual essentially. So what types of regulations exist around how you can apply and work using the NTP NTC certification? Well, that actually goes back to the question that Erica asked right before you, which is that it literally differs from state to state. So to answer that question, my suggestion is just refer to the answer that I gave to Erica about how to find out more about what are the laws and regulations that govern her state? Following that, are you able to get any licenses after the NTA education? Yes, you as a matter of fact can. There are so many graduates who go on to not only do continuing education um, to do testing, but literally they go on to get their functional medicine degree. They go on to become a um, physical therapist. They go on to become a registered nurse or registered dietitian. You are not limited by anything other than yourself. What you decide to do after you graduate, the directions that you are interested in, that you're passionate about, that you wanna go in, the ways that you decide that you want to further your education, totally up to you. As a matter of fact, um, one of my class mentors for the LA class that I'm currently teaching actually has her PhD in psychology as well as being an NTP. So that is the direction that she decided she wanted to pursue and further was utilizing nutrition to support mental health, which I am all for, like all for. <laughs> so hopefully that goes ahead and answers your question. Um, Leah wanted to go ahead and add my wonderful colleague that I'll be teaching with in Brisbane, as well as teaching, I work in a medical center with integrative doctors and a compounding pharmacy. And see, this would be a really good example of how if that's something that you're interested in once you've graduated, you're going to have access to people like Leah and all the other people 
who have done already what it is that you want to do so that you can talk to them, get their nuggets of wisdom having to do with their experience, what will make navigating those waters easier for you because you have the benefit of them sharing their experiences with you. Thank you, Lou. That was wonderful. Uh, Nadia asks, please can you answer my question? I am I, I N. Is it going to be the same kind? Oh, I already answered that question. Fantastic. Okay. And now I'm down to Tara. Are there, are there job opportunities within NTA once you graduate? Well, it kind of depends on what skill set you have and what the NTA is looking for. Um, it really, it can you get a job at NTA once you graduate? Yes. Can you got, get a job at NTA before you graduate or before you even sign up for taking a program? Yes. It depends on what NTA is looking for and what skills you have. So, yes. <laughs> But um, you're not limited by that. I mean, the, the possibilities of what to do with your NTA certification is really endless. And it's up to you about what directions really, really speak to you. So hopefully that answers your question, Tara. Juliana asks, do you work in collaboration with any international or European nutritional schools institutions? Can I work online as a nutritional consultant after graduation? So first of all, I already answered the question about can you work online as a nutritional consultant after graduation? So if you weren't present when that question was covered, just go ahead and go back and watch the recording once we close things up for this informational session. Um, we do not, well, what I can tell you is that GAPS, the Gut and Psychology Syndrome Therapeutic Protocol, is a NTA-approved continuing education program that Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, who uh, lives in the UK, actually oversees. So um, that is one example of a continuing education program that we actually um, partner with that is approved by NTA. We do not yet collaborate with international institutions or schools that I am familiar with. I know that we, well, actually, you know what? I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to speak out of turn. Um, I know that there are partnerships that NTA has all over the board. Um, and therefore, it's not for me to really speak with any authority about who we are or aren't affiliated with, because that is definitely not my wheelhouse. <laughs> um, and a different person would probably be better to ask about that. So if you are interested in that information, I would call the admissions office because they Although the person that you talk to may not know the information, they will know where to find that information so that you can get your question answered. So thank you so much for asking that, Juliana. That's a great question. Does NTA have a list of additional programs you can take to further your education? Yes. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that's really great is that um, NTA literally has someone who oversees alumni. So as soon as everyone graduates, they get an email from the alumni manager that gives links and information to all of the different continuing education opportunities that are actually okayed by NTA. And they even will give you examples of, well, this is not a continuing education program, but you can still get your continuing education credits fulfilled if you do a list of any number of things, like read a book and do a book review. You get one hour of continuing education credit. And yes, in order to keep up your membership with NTA, you do need to fulfill 24 hours of continuing education every two years. So that's essentially 12 CEUs every year. So great question. You're welcome, Victoria. 
Um, oh, thank you. So um, my wonderful colleague, Jill, who works for NTA as well, actually helped Tara answer her question by providing a list that we have on the website. Nadia, great. I see the thumbs up. Thank you. Erica, fantastic. Okay, so I think that after having spent this hour and 10 minutes of wonderful time together answering all of your amazing questions, which tells me what fantastic brains you all have, and therefore you would probably be excellent people for the NTA program, it is time for me to bid you all adieu and say this was fantastic. I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining, and have a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.